Islam, of course, was born in 570 in <coughs> Mecca. In 610, he had the first revelation of which we just spoke. And in 613, he was given permission to make an open, open invitation to Islam. After severe persecution in 615, we have the first migration to Abyssinia, where several of the Sahaba or companions of the Prophet were sent to seek refuge with the good Christian king of Abyssinia. And of course, the Abyssinian, the Ethiopian Muslim community persists to this day. And then in 617, we have the very sad event of the boycott of Banu Hashim, which uh, was where uh, the Quraysh, the tribe from which the Prophet Islam came from, forbade the other uh, clans to trade with the clan of the Banu Hashim and to intermarry and really to have very much to do with them at all. And this very, very difficult period which was an attempt to force the Prophet Islam to give up his message, his, for so many reasons, very much for economic reasons in the sense that it was only the polytheism of Mecca which allowed for the very, very vital and dynamic trade uh, that Mecca enjoyed as a result, but also of course, there was some degree of, of religious fervor for, for the, the over 300 Meccan gods. And for those who had some sort of genuine religious feeling, um, of course, what the Prophet was coming with was a, was a type of blasphemy for them. So they wanted at all costs to put a stop with, to this very, very popular religion. Then in 620, we have the journey of the Mi'raj, which is when the Prophet ﷺ was taken from <coughs> Mecca to Jerusalem in a single night, and then the famous ascent, the Isra and the Mi'raj. Of course, the Isra is the actual journey to Jerusalem. The Mi'raj is the spiritual ascent, which has been the basis for so many Sufi accounts of the spiritual path uh, throughout Islamic history. This is a beautiful photograph of Medina al and the 